Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to wrap up chapter one today. Um, it actually should be a pretty short discussion. We just need to hit uh, one more item at the end of the chapter. Uh, we're going to talk about the periodic table today. And keep in mind, we are just introducing the periodic table today. There will be a lot of discussion through the year, and we'll um, learn many detailed aspects about the beauty um, and usefulness of this periodic table. But today I just want to talk about um, a few vocabulary terms that will be helpful for the remainder of the year. Um, here is a copy of the periodic table. Um, it's one version of which uh, you will see many. Um, you'll notice that there are 18 columns on the periodic table and that there are seven rows on the periodic table. Now you might count these two as individual rows, but in reality uh, these two rows here uh, fit in these two squares. Now don't worry about why for right now, but this row gets stuck in that square and this row, all of these elements are actually stuck in that square. So we have seven, uh, seven rows and 18 columns. Now, um, you'll often hear me use the word group or family when I refer to the periodic table. Now, when I use the term group or family, keep in mind that these are the vertical columns. Um, of the periodic table. And do you remember how many there are? We just mentioned it. Uh, they are numbered from 1 to 18. So let's take a look here. Uh, the numbering system on this periodic table is a bit outdated. Uh, the modern numbering system is group 1, then this is group 2, then we have group 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Then this is group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And the last group on the periodic table is group 18. Now many of these elements um, if I point to a symbol, you should know their properly spelled name. For instance, if I pointed to this element right here, CR, you should know that that's the element chromium. That's on your list of 50 elements that you'll need to know for the year. If I point to AL, you should know that that's aluminium. If I pointed to NE, you should know that that is neon. Now, don't worry about these numbers right here uh, beside each element. We'll get to that in just a couple of weeks. Right now you need to know so far that these vertical columns are called groups or families and they are numbered from 1 to 18. Now members of the same group have similar chemical uh, properties. So they are said to be in the same family. Members of the same family, your family, are similar to each other and members of the same family on the periodic table also have certain similarities. Okay, the next term is period, and periods are the horizontal rows um, of the periodic table. Now they are also numbered, they are numbered from 1 to 7. So there are seven of these rows, or seven periods. It begins with the first period, which contains the element hydrogen, and all the way across here to the element helium. And then we have the second period with lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. The third period, which consists of sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon. Then there's the fourth, the fifth, the sixth and the seventh periods. Now keep in mind these two rows at the bottom fit in this square and this square. So these elements are all a member of the sixth period and these elements are all a member of the seventh period. 
Now, for metals, I don't really want to define what a metal is right now. I just want you guys to know where they are located on the periodic table. So the metals are located um, at the left and the center of the periodic table. Now there is one exception to this. Hydrogen is not considered to be a metal. Hydrogen is a non-metal. So if on your periodic table in your notes you were to draw a line underneath the element boron and we'll make a little staircase here looks just like this. Hopefully that's showing up well on the video. This line separates pretty much the metals on the left from what we call the non-metals on the right. You'll notice that there are many more metals on the periodic table than there are non-metals. So metals are these on the left and center and these two rows at the bottom, remember the lanthanide and actinide series, these are all metals. So they belong on the left hand side. Non-metals are um, located on the right side of the periodic table. Uh, we'll say at the right side of the periodic table. So here's our little staircase and these elements here to the right are considered to be non-metals. Now, what about these that are right on the staircase? What do we call them? Well, these are called the metalloids. It turns out that metalloids are tweeners. They have properties of metals and nonmetals. So the metalloids are found between uh, metals and nonmetals. Um, of the periodic table. Okay, now there are some exceptions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the metalloids. They are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic. Do you guys remember this symbol here? SB. It's one of those you have to learn. That's antimony and the element tellurium. Now let me show you where these guys are located on the periodic table. We have boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, and tellurium. Do you notice that those elements are right on that staircase? Now aluminum is also on the staircase but it's considered to be a metal. Polonium is on the staircase and it's considered to be a metal Astatine is on the staircase and it's a non-metal. And so generally speaking, the elements located on either side of the staircase are metalloids with a few exceptions. Now, before we quit, I, I want to talk about a few other aspects about the periodic table and vocabulary terms we'll be using quite often. This last row on our column on the periodic table, group 18, these are all gases and they are all chemically unreactive for the most part. Since they don't react with anything at all, or very easily with anything at all, we call them noble. So group 18, um, the members of this group are known as the noble gases. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. They are the noble gases. Group 17 contains a group called the halogens. Let's see if I can fit that in there. The halogens. Now that includes fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Those are the halogens. And that's just a common name for group 17. Then if we jump all the way to the left side, uh, this first group, with the exception of hydrogen, so starting with lithium, these are called the alkali metals. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. So the group one metals are called the alkali metals. Hydrogen is not a metal, so it's not included in that name. And the last group that has a nickname is group two. 
It consists of beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. These guys are called the alkaline earth metals. The alkaline earth metals, that's group two. So we have group 18, they're known as the noble gases. Group 17 are known as the halogens. Group 1 metals are known as the alkali metals. And group 2, they are known as the alkaline earth metals. Okay, now hopefully that's enough to, uh, to get us going with the periodic table. There are many other aspects of the periodic table that we will learn, and we'll spend lots and lots of time throughout the year discussing the periodic table and its beauty as well as its usefulness. But we'll stop there for the day. Uh, we just wrapped up chapter one. Um, you guys should be uh, very familiar with that vocabulary. We're going to begin chapter two with our next video. And um, chapter two, let's see what we're going to be talking about. Oh, we're going to be talking about measuring and calculating. So chemistry is a quantitative science. That means we get to do a little bit of measuring and we get to do some math. Now don't be too intimidated by the math. Uh, the most math we'll do in honors chemistry is going to be Algebra 1. Um, so you shouldn't have much of a problem with that. Uh, but Chapter 2 will be in our next video. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy that. Hopefully you'll have a calculator by then. You'll need a good scientific calculator. Uh, make sure it has uh, an EE or EXP button. Um, and let's see what else we'd need for that. Uh, maybe a Y to the X button. And eventually we'll need a log and LOG button. So make sure you get a hold of that uh, before the next time we meet. Alrighty, have a great day. Bye-bye.